I've always considered myself a substance over style person. But there are some movies with such immaculate style, uh, you can't help but be mesmerized by them. Welcome to the Positive Picture Show, where I talk about movies that I love. Movies like Drive are so cool that it instantly becomes uncool to like them. From the pulsing soundtrack to the minimal dialogue to the expertly framed moments, Drive is perhaps the coolest movie ever made. And I use that term a little derogatorily, even though I absolutely adore this movie. Talk about a perfect cold open. Tick of the Clock by the Chromatics is the absolute best song to start this film off with. It works thematically and stylistically to create a tension and a vibe that's hard to find in any other movie. Wordless Gosling, listening intently to the police scanner as he meticulously weaves his way through LA is a neo-noir dream. The shots are tight, the cinematography is gorgeous but simple, and the writing flawless. When Gosling pulls into the stadium and flips his jacket inside out, I audibly gasped. It's so smart, so smooth, and teaches you everything you need to know about this unnamed driver. Night Call by Kavinsky was written for this movie, I swear. Or maybe this movie was written for that song. Either way, there are few more pristine marriages between film and song than Drive and Night Call. The energy of that song and all the songs of this soundtrack permeates every second of the movie and every fiber of your body. Paired with the moody shots of darkened Los Angeles and the hazardously purple credits, you slip in this world effortlessly. You become entranced by this movie. That may be the only word to use to describe the feeling of watching Nicholas Winding Refn's films. They're entrancing. Like watching a hypnotist lure you in with neon and synthwave. Refn is certainly an auteur. He has full grasp of his art form. I'm not a fanatic of Refn's. I've only seen Only God Forgives, Neon Demon, and Bronzen, and haven't fallen head over heels for any of them besides Drive. Drive certainly is his masterpiece. There are shots that seem simple, but are actually deeply layered. The shot of Gosling standing alone in his apartment with the crossbar shadow of the window marking him invokes this feeling of imprisonment. Like he's staring out of the solitary window of a long locked cell. You know he feels trapped even before you know why. His hand alone and without expression on the steering wheel implies how he feels like a tool, not a person. We don't get his face, his feelings, his experience, we just get his skill and his expertise. The driver reflected in the small frame across from Irene emphasizes that he is separate from her, that they're not from the same world. His reflection is even out of focus, whereas the picture of her husband is more pronounced. Sitting in the car, bathed in the red taillights, as the news Irene's husband returning washes over them, helps us understand the driver's fear, even when his face doesn't. The driver, framed as a minuscule figure in his own home, illuminated only by the feeble ring light, shows us how small and worthless he feels, how alone. I wish I could go through all of them. Gosling has made, at this point, an entire career off of being the stoic anti-hero. In Place Beyond the Pines, this and Blade Runner 2049, you get a full range of what silent seriousness can look like etched on Gosling's face. He is born to play these types of roles. There is something about him, something that makes him a star and sets him apart from the rest, which makes you empathize with him despite there being no overt reason to do so. Few actors can pull that off. For many, it just seems like a lazy or flat performance. But for some, and Gosling being the master of them, they actually become more charismatic the less they emote. It's the eyes, I believe. There's a sadness and a somberness behind his eyes that can't be faked. And we as the audience eat it up. But he isn't just some quiet puppy. 
when it's necessary, he can show a level of aggression that can't be missed but is still restrained. Carrie Mulligan's Irene is a unique figure in this illegal underground. She's a shining light, plays more like a beacon than really a person. The driver sets all of his hopes of a human life on her. She's the humble, realistic, manic pixie dream girl to the driver's taciturn incel. She doesn't seem otherworldly to us in the normal world, but she plays otherworldly to the driver. Brooks, Perlman, Isaac, they all play their own level of malice so quietly. Their villainy, their shadowy nature makes Gosling seem even more gentle and serene, even when committing his own level of vicious violence. Many people hate this movie because of the way it depicts action. The trailers, the advertising, everything leading up to it made people think we were getting a neon Fast and Furious. When instead we got a synth-drenched examination of a sociopath, people were understandably upset. But that doesn't mean this movie isn't thrilling. The action comes in the tension more than the choreography. The death of Standard is played out not like a great western shootout, but a romanceless execution. It's brutal and simple, nothing fun or cinematic. There's no music in the car chase, just the melody of the car's driving. The backward stunt and subsequent U-turn are both expertly executed, but neither have the flash that, say, Baby Driver does. I've always said that Baby Driver is to drive what a simple favor is to Gone Girl, or what a Laffy Taffy is to a fruit leather. Same basic idea, very different interpretation. The way this film depicts violence is incredibly rare. It's more akin to a horror movie than an action movie where the tension is all the building up, but the actual events are quick and sudden. The motel fight, in terms of actual time spent committing violence on each other, is like 15 seconds, but the whole scene oozes with so much uncertainty and fear. The primal fury of the driver's hammer blows, mixed with Gosling's quivering, creates perhaps the most iconic scene in the movie. I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the elevator scene. Wow. How it transitions from beautiful, almost ethereal romance to dirty, barbaric violence is unrivaled. The score grows and explodes as they kiss, but once the fighting starts, the music leaves. The lighting changes, and the grotesque reality resumes. Violence depicted in this way sits in your stomach. You don't dream about doing it in the same way as you dream about spinning a lightsaber or flying a jet. It makes you sick. For all intents and purposes, this film is a musical. In a musical, the rule is when an emotion gets too intense to act out, sing. In this film, all the key emotionally heavy moments aren't told through Gosling, but rather through the soundtrack backing him. I'm going to attempt to discuss the soundtrack without breaking the merciless copyright rules on YouTube. I've already talked about Night Call and Tick of the Clock, but I can talk about them again. Honestly, I would talk about them all day. Night Call is a song I listen to when I want to have a melancholy night drive home. It's just this alluring blend of smooth and sharp. I can't quite pinpoint the phraseology. A Real Hero by Electric Youth is the first moment in the movie where the driver gets to break out of his prison. Its optimistic throbbing plays underneath the richest scene in the movie, driving in the gorgeous setting sun across the glinting water and into a hopeful future. This is the moment if it was a true musical where Gosling would break out into a sweeping soliloquy, but instead he sits silently as this song blares out his inner feelings. Under Your Spell by Desire, playing across the diametrically opposite shots of the driver alone in his dark room and Irene surrounded in her bright room is genius. I can see the stage play now. Everyone is frozen on stage as the two sit on opposite ends of the apron. They're both singing about their secret love as no one on stage with them can hear. We know about their love despite not seeing a montage of their love story. And that's the power of this soundtrack. Oh My Love by, and I don't know how to pronounce these names, Katinya Ranieri and Riz Ortolani feels like the swan song of the driver. He was almost out. He didn't want back in, but here he is, going right back down the path he said he wouldn't. The song soars, ringing with 
immense grandeur unlike the low beating of all the rest of the score. It flies, growing with a delicate nature so juxtaposed to the images of the drivers plotting. And when the song ends, the driver's potential redemption is gone. With his expressionless mask and stalking walk, the driver transforms into a slasher villain, not an action hero. He moves with merciless precision against Nino in a scene taken straight from a horror movie. The strobe, the framing, the methodical pace, everything about this scene doesn't miss a beat. The driver descends back into his darkness. All for her. He steals, he kills, he plots, and he fights all for her. In this sick depiction of an unhealthy romance, you can't help but be touched by his devotion, by his drive. As you watch the driver sit there, motionless, every part of you begs for him to be alive, but all the evidence points to the opposite. But the tune of humanity grows as a real hero pushes him back to life. The song that reflects not only his chance at being good, but his love for Irene gives him the strength to carry on. For how long? Who knows. For what? Who knows, but he pushes himself for her through the darkness into the next dawning. I honestly can't praise this movie enough. There aren't many films that seem as consciously and deliberately crafted as this one. Every frame and facial expression is pinpointed by a delicate artisan. I get so worn out by mass-produced cinema, by films that start with a release date and then they write a script, by grade over CGI heavy post-production focused products that read more like the back of a cereal box than a literary masterpiece. Drive isn't going to change your life necessarily. Drive isn't going to move you tectonically like some Oscar pictures do, but Drive will impress upon you the importance of vision. Refn had a vision, a vision he wouldn't substitute or watch down and delivered that vision flawlessly. Style is definitely important. Every director worth their salt has style, but style with no purpose and direction with no depth is no more than an EDM light show. And this is not a light show. There's a reason why Drive appeals to so many people, and it's not just the style and it's not just the edginess of it. This film has a lot of palpable pathos. It's about a man who has one skill and hates himself for it. He wishes he was a good man. He wishes he could get out or be free, but deep down he knows he can't do anything else. He drives, he moves forward, and he never gets to be the hero. This channel is growing, and I would love for you to be a part of it. Like and comment if you enjoyed what you saw today. Subscribe, I'll see you next time.